and the way you do that is you have a person bite their teeth together and then you take your probe and I like a range. I don't want just one you know, measurement in the front because then what you're telling me is that all the anterior teeth are, have an overjet of say five millimeters or whatever and that's not necessarily true. So what I do is I take a range. I start at the canine and I come all the way across with the probe. You measure with the probe and you go from the incisal edge down to where you actually touch the mandibular tooth and you come all the way across canine to canine and then you give me that range. It could be anything from two millimeters to five millimeters and you would write that down on your, um, on your sheet. And a normal overjet is about one to three millimeters. So anything past three millimeters you're starting to get more into that class two-ish type profile. Now this is a normal overjet we could get a probe in there, you'd read that's probably about three millimeters. This is more excessive. You can see here you've got quite, you've got quite a distance from between the maxillary incisors and the mandibular incisors. Now, an overbite is a vertical measurement. That's how far your anterior mask maxillary teeth go over your mandibular teeth. And there are three classifications with that. There's normal and they're only about, that's only about a third of the way over the teeth. Moderate, you can still see a little bit of the bottom, the uh, down at the uh, gingival margin of the mandibular anterior teeth. And then severe, when a person bites down, you cannot see the um, mandibular anterior teeth at all. This is normal, so you still see pretty much of the two, and that presents a nice smile. This is a little bit more moderate. You can see, you can still see some of the mandibular anterior teeth, but it's starting to get to be a problem. And now you've got severe. You can't see any of the mandibular anterior teeth at all. Part of the problem with this too is if we could actually open up the back of this person's head and look back there, you would see that these mandibular anterior teeth are impacting or contacting the tissue, the hard palate behind these maxillary anterior teeth. And that can become very painful and it can actually, it will eventually form a keratinized tissue back there in negative millimeters. But you still, you measure from this would be the incisal edge of the mandibular anteriors to the um, facial of the maxillary anteriors, and that will give you negative millimeters, but it's still, it's still a measurement. Okay, anterior crossbite, usually associated with the class three occlusion. It's when any type of crossbite, it's when the, the teeth that are supposed to be wherever they are aren't. It's very simplistic, but I'll show you. See this and see this. Um, you've got the mandibular anterior. This guy has a lot of problems, but you've got the mandibular anteriors ahead of the maxillary anteriors. So that is an anterior crossbite. There are two types of posterior crossbite. With crossbite, we seem to see a lot of it in in this area of the country, simply because, and this is a theory. Because we have more allergies and because children have a hard time breathing through their nose, especially when they're sleeping, that they tend to sleep with their mouths open. And so it keeps the musculature right in through here taut. And it's not that that musculature pushes the maxilla in, but what it does is it prevents the maxilla from expanding to its fullest potential. So that's one theory of why we have a lot of crossbites in this part of the country. And you can see here, this is your typical crossbite right here where the maxilla is inside of the mandible. And of course here you can see this child probably went through palatal expansion and so she had some interceptive treatment and so she's back pretty close to where she should be and orthodontics will take care of the rest of it. But you can see the difference here versus here. And she's much happier.
<laughs> okay. And you can see that this, this number, the second kind is where the maxillary arch, maxillary arch actually overextends the mandibular arch. It's not quite as common as the first kind, but we do see it. And this is where the, the lingual cusps on the maxilla are contacting the buccal cusps of the mandible. So instead of being lined up on top of each other, you've got the maxilla that's overextended and the mandibles in. And you can see here, you can see a little bit of this back here, where this, it's inside. The, it's a little hard to see on this, but um, here you can see a little bit more. The, the uh, facial cusps of the mandible are contacting the lingual cusps of the maxilla. Now, an anterior open bite involves a lack of incisal contact whatsoever from canine to canine. Um, and usually a patient can stick their tongue right through, bite down and put their tongue right through. That's open bite. Mrs. Yeah. Lukers, I have a question. Yes. With open bite, um, what if their teeth just all aren't erupted all the way? That, if you, if you go by definition, that would be considered open bite, but open bite is a specific classification of malocclusion. So if you're just going by definition, you could consider that open bite. But if you're looking at a malocclusion, which is what we're doing here, that is not considered um, that's not considered open bite, simply because once that tooth drops down, your open bite's gone. Okay. So is it truly open bite? No. no. Very good question, though, because we do see a lot of that. Uh -huh. So with that picture, that's as far, like, that patient is completely occluded? The patient, you can see back here, okay. the patient is completely occluded. So from canine to canine, actually, this even extends a little past that. This is a real severe case, but you can see that the patient is Okay. Completely yeah. open. You can literally put your tongue right through. Okay. Now, what causes open bite? This is where you're supposed to think. What could be some causes? Thumbs up. Very good. Huh? And it's not thumb sucking. It's not just for children anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what would be another one? And we do see a lot of it. Tongue thrusting. Good deal. <laughs> very, very good. Excellent. Yes, I'm... tongue thrusting. Every, what that is is when a normal swallow, your, the tongue goes up to the palate and down. In a tongue thruster, that tongue goes forward. And of course, you know how strong um, the tongue muscle is. It just literally pushes against those anterior teeth. And a lot of times, it's, it's so to the point where the tongue just forms a space. Posterior is open there bite. Is for tongue thrusting? Yes, there, actually there is. It's myofunctional therapy, which, where they actually retrain your tongue as far as how to swallow. And if you don't go through that, what happens is you go through orthodontics and you wind up staying a lifetime in retainers because you can never... There's nothing that you can do that will um, overpower the strength of that tongue. So you just have to stay because what will happen is you go through all this orthodontics and then you swallow and it separates those teeth and pushes them back out again. So you have to stay in permanent retention. <laughs> and this is posterior open bite. You can see there's occlusion in the front and none in the back. And then it's always good to get a pantograph on your young children. If nothing else, you want to find out if there are any potential problems, if they're missing any of their permanent teeth. You'd like to know that ahead of time. Um, especially as they're losing teeth, and if you know that there is no tooth, permanent tooth going to replace it, you want to make sure that you've got something in line right there to hold the space open so that the teeth around it don't close up and then that compromises See, this is what you don't want to have happen. This is a permanent dentition. This, nothing was done about that. The primary canine is still retained. And the most important tooth in your mouth is of no use. It's not even in your mouth. Yay. And it's all in the smile. <laughs> I remember that. 
And that's all, folks. <laughs> <laughs>